here at our midtown location and i greet you again in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ i'm pastor alex Ravel, and i want to acknowledge that we welcome you to another edition of the spotlight where just for a few moments each sunday we take a few moments of time to highlight for you all some of the things going on within our church and our church community as well well family we're excited people are steadily coming in it is an absolutely gorgeous day here at our midtown location and listen there's still time to get here if you're worshiping in person still come there's plenty of parking still available and we're excited for how god will move we also have our praise team singing this sunday our children choir is absolutely dynamic they're going to be giving us a few selections as well and you can just really feel the energy here in our service and as we're counting down we want to highlight just a couple of things that happened this past week and that are upcoming as well well, if you don't know by now, family, this past Sunday, Pastor Muriel, during our offering moment at our Midtown location, uh, highlighted uh, really the culmination of time and work and labor and experience that have really come to a head through our CAR initiative. That stands for our Central African Republic Initiative, where for the past month, Pastor Muriel has been asking and encouraging us to go above and beyond our tithes and offerings. And we met that challenge, family. By now, hopefully you know that not only did we reach the goal of raising $100,000 to build a church in the Central African Republic, but we exceeded that amount. We raised over $150,000 family in a little less than a month. And it's historic for so many reasons. So this past Sunday, Pastor Muriel brought up a check from Cascade to present to the head of global ministries, which is the mission arm of our United Methodist Church denomination that goes into all six continents to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he gave that check to the head of global ministries, Mr. Roland Fernandez. And Roland reminded us that not only was he surprised because he didn't know the amount we raised, not only was he surprised we exceeded that amount, but he also mentioned the importance of it. And part of that, he mentioned how this is the first time in the history of the United Methodist Church denomination that a church will be built and specifically a Methodist church will be built in the Central African Republic. And, you know, Pastor Muriel so often encourages us and reminds us through his sermon series and Bible studies and morning prayers that our goal is to be a light in the community and around the world. So to see that really come into fruition through this car initiative is really a blessing. So this is just step one. We want to thank everyone who was able to donate, everyone who was able to contribute, everyone's prayers for helping us reach this incredible milestone. And now we still ask for your prayers as they enter the next phase of actually building and constructing this church. Listen, be sure to go to our website and our social media pages if you haven't already to see some of the recap footage and video of how we got to this moment and what also moved me and our youth as well as I showed them on Sunday was hearing from the congregation there in the Central African Republic about them receiving this gift of building a church. You know, Jesus says that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So I'm just glad and blessed to be at a church who is willing to go above and beyond, not just in our city and nation, but into the world to bless our brothers and sisters in Africa. So thank you all and everyone who was able to support that initiative as well. And also be sure to go to our North Georgia UMC website where you can see also a short press release of some of the content of how we were able to get to this moment and what it means for our denomination and our community as well. Well, family, we are almost ready for our countdown and service. We have just a few highlights we want to make sure that you are aware of. So family, yesterday, less than 12 hours ago, we had our Girl Scout father-daughter dance here at our Midtown location in the Fellowship Hall. And it was an absolutely incredible event. You all should know by now, Cascade has one of the strongest Girl Scout programs in the city of Atlanta. And our Girl Scouts, I believe, are some of the best and brightest. So yesterday on Saturday, 
Cascade, along with a few other churches in our community, came together to host a Girl Scout father-daughter dance where close to 80 to 100 people came out. And family, as you can imagine, it was just a beautiful thing to see our young upcoming Girl Scouts with their father and them dancing in their beautiful wear. And just a moment where we can just pour back into our next generation of Girl Scouts with love and adoration. And that's really what the church and community is about. So often we see our Girl Scouts here once a year serving cookies, but there's so much more they do on a daily basis from their community service to learning how to work in teamwork and so many leadership skills that happen through going through the Girl Scout troops and advancing into different programs as well. So we were excited, family, to host them and that beautiful event that will be remaining and remind, staying in their minds for quite a while. And listen, if you have a young girl who you want to be connected to our Girl Scout program, it is not too late. It is from kindergarten to 12th grade. So we wanna encourage you all to come out as you're available to connect with that as well. And listen, also upcoming next Sunday, please be sure to mark your calendars, family, to come to our Midtown location right here for our Youth Confirmation Sunday. As you all know, every year we take a young group of middle schoolers in sixth through eighth grade through the confirmation process where we remind them of their baptism. And then on top of that, we educate them on the core disciplines of the Christian faith and United Methodist denomination beliefs. And it has been a pleasure to walk them through that process. We have 11 of some of the smartest, brightest, inquisitive youth in Atlanta, I believe. And I want you all to come out because this process isn't just them doing it alone. It's about community and the church raising them and growing them together in that process as well. So we'll be baptizing some of our confirmands. And for those who've already been baptized, we'll be performing that reaffirmation of their faith, helping them remember that baptism. And then at the end, as usual, we will have the confirmands stand before the con congregation and be confirmed confirmed as well. I'm so excited that we have such a strong next generation coming up after us and we need your support, we need your energy, we need your time to make sure we can continue pouring into them so they can become everything they need to be. Well, family, a few other things we want to run by you. Please be sure to mark your calendars for next Tuesday, that's April 16th at 7 p.m. We are asking you all to come out to support our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Kevin Muriel, as he is the guest speaker at Friendship Baptist Church. That's next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for their revival. Again, Friendship Baptist Church is holding their revival next Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m. And we are asking the Cascade family, as you always do, to show up and support our senior pastor as he delivers a dynamic word from God. Well, family, another point we want to put on your calendar is our One Cascade Day of Service. April 20th to the 27th, we are asking everybody in Cascade, whether you're a part of a division, a ministry, a member, or even a first time guest to in our One Cascade Day of Service, that's our moment and our week to have community service and provide community service to the Atlanta community. Family, you know Pastor Muriel always mentions our goal and vision and pillars is to be a light in the community. And our one cascade day of service is really to go above and beyond what we do during the year. So we're asking you to do a few things. Not only are we asking you to do some community service, we want you to capture it as well. And we're asking that you wear some type of cascade paraphernalia so we can show the world and community that we are committed to going above and beyond to be a light in the community. So again, that's April 20th through the 27th as well. Well, family, we are almost ready for our service. Our children are lining up to sing as we speak, but we want to also make sure you remember that we know we have a very strong virtual audience as well. And we wanna make sure you can be connected to what goes on in the life of our church at every single level. So if you haven't already, please be sure to follow us on all social media platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, at Cascade UMC. Again, 
at Cascade UMC. And also be sure to go to our website so you can receive the newsletter of upcoming events that's happening each week in the life of our church known as The Pathway. And again, you can access that by just going to our website right now where you are on your phones and clicking connect and being signed up for the pathway. You know, Jesus, as I said a few moments ago, said the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. And we're in a season and a life of our church where God is still calling us to do bigger and greater things. And we want to make sure that you are a part of that as well. Well, family, the last point I wanted to mention is that the last Saturday of this month, April 27th, our youth are also having what's called Youth Game Day at Cascade. And that's really just a time and period where our youth in 6th through 12th grade can register and is free to come out to our Midtown campus to celebrate school ending and their accomplishments where they can gather together in a body of Christ of young people where we can have discussions and also just have a good time as well. So that's Saturday, April 27th from 1230 to 230 right here at our Midtown location also. And then finally, family, as you can see, April is a busy month for us. Also, Sunday, April 28th, right after church here at our Midtown location, we're going to have what's called our upper grade ceremony. Family, you should know by now, we have an absolutely thriving children ministry here at our church and our youth ministry as well. And so upper grade is a program we started about a year or two ago where we highlight our fifth graders transitioning to youth church this summer. Youth church is from sixth through 12th grade. So once every year, we like to highlight and recognize our children who've successfully gone through our children's church from K through fifth grade and are now taking the next step. And that's known as our upper grade ceremony. And listen, there are so many ways that our youth and our next generation need your support still. So we're asking if you feel led and called to volunteer or help out in any area from our college students who are off away and still return home to our high schoolers, to our middle schoolers, and to our children as well. It is so important that we continue to pour back into the next generation, just like we all were poured into as well. So if you wanna know how to get connected, you wanna know how you can just help even in your free time, us move our next generation forward. Again, please go to our church website at cascadeumc.org and click the connect button where you can connect to our division and our ministry to help our next generation as well. Well, family, I am excited for service. We are now ready for our service to begin. Listen, if you're worshiping with us online, be sure to use the hashtag One Cascade Sunday. Again, that's One Cascade Sunday. We're excited for how God will move and how the Holy Spirit will move as it does during our service as well. We're excited for how God will show up and bless lives in our service. We're excited to see you all in a few moments, and we are so thankful for what God will do in our community and the world. We'll see you in a few. Take care. Good morning, Cascade. This is the day that the Lord has made. Here are your Sunday announcements.
Cascade family, these have been your Sunday announcements. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Have a blessed week, and remember to stay the course. Greetings, friends. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. It is my joy to welcome you to worship. If you are here in the Cascade Sanctuary, or if you are joining us from across the world online, we welcome you to this experience of God through Jesus Christ, where we will lift high the name of our Lord through this corporate act of worship. We invite you, if you are on social media, take a moment and share this stream. If you are here in the Cascade Sanctuary, prepare your hearts as we enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and into God's courts with praise. We will be thankful unto God and let us now bless God's name. We welcome you to worship. Good morning, Cascade. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me, bless this name. Has the Lord been good to anybody today? Has he been good? Has he kept you? I know you're sitting here, so he woke you up this morning. Amen. We're going to sing about his goodness and his greatness, how awesome he is. Yes. We sang this before, so get with us, sing with us. Feel his spirit. He's here today. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We lift you, Lord. long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Can I get a witness? Are you going to bless him? You're going to bless him at all times? Amen. Let's sing it together. Sing. Now I will bless, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise No matter what I As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. Come on, sing. Oh, magnify him. Yes, you have, Lord. You've been better than good to me. Yes, you have, Lord. You've been better than good to me. Hey, say, say, I 
better than good. You've been better than good. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them God's been better than good to me. Every time I turn around, I can testify that he's still good. He keeps on making a way for me. Lord, you're good. You're good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit right now, God. We don't rush your presence, but we take the time and worship you. We lay down every care and every weight in your presence. We focus our attention on you, God. And we say thank you. We thank you for being so good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful today. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Oh, Lord, you are Lord, good. You are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if.
So you've been yes. so good. You've been Jesus so good. When they said there was no way I would make it another day. When they said I wouldn't have any children, God opened up my womb. When they said I wouldn't have a husband, you sent the man of my dreams. You, you've been better. You've been so good. You've been, we won't rush this moment, so good. Just think over your life. You've been so good. Come on, lift up your voice. Say, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been so good. You've been, you've been so good. And if you can't think of anything, he sent his son to die for you, to save your life. He's been so good to you. He's been so good. So good, one last time. You've been so good, so good to me. To me. Come on, put your hands together if God has really been good to you. If He's made a way for you, if He's opened doors, keep clapping for Him. He deserves your praise, He deserves your worship. He's good. He's better than good. I can't say it enough. I can't sing it enough. He's good. He's good. He's good. Father, you've been so good. Father, you've been so good. We don't take it for granted, but we love you with all that we have. Because you're good, God. You're good. Yes, Lord. I got one question. Has it been good to you? All I believe you can do a little bit better than that. Has he been good? I dare three people to get up and testify that the Lord has been good to all. You've been so good. You've been. Hallelujah. If you would just rest on your feet, if everybody would just rest on your feet, just lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you for being good. Oh, come on. Let's get a spirit of worship in here today. Come on. Just worship the Lord because he's been so good to us. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name why because he's been what so good to all of us today let us go to god in prayer this morning gracious god as we come into this place we thank you because you have been so good to us and now we ask that you would just bless us collectively and individually as we worship you in spirit and in truth in the name of jesus the christ we pray amen and amen as you remain standing, greet your neighbor and let them know you're glad to see them here today in the sweet, sweet spirit of Cascade. There's a sweet
Give our coming generation choir a round of applause. They went all the way old school on us. Y'all too young to remember when that came out. We would jam on that all day long. Amen, amen. It is time for 
our morning announcements and just want to catch your attention for a couple of minutes, if you don't mind. First and foremost, want to announce that our Torchbearers Ministry will be celebrating a prayer breakfast on the first Sunday in May at at 10, on the first Saturday in May at, at 10 o'clock a.m. And they will have tickets available in the cafe afterwards um, if you are welcome to purchase them at that time. I also want to congratulate our wonderful parents and leaders of our Girl Scouts uh, for doing a, an outstanding job with our father-daughter dance on last night. Let's give them a round of applause. I believe later on you'll be able to go online and see how they even wore our pastor out with dancing last night. Amen. Amen. Our Cascade Day of Service will be on held April the 20th through the 27th in recognition of National Volunteer Week. Let's give back by signing up at one Cascade Day uh, of Service. Please visit our website or click on the link in our pathway to sign up. Be sure to wear your Cascade t-shirt on your day of service as we continue to be a light in the community. Cascade, in partnership with the Fulton County Solicitor General um, and other community partners, present our Spring Clean 3.0 Record Restriction and Career Fair for Nonviolent Offenders to be held on Saturday, April the 20th from 12 to 3 p.m. Please scan the QR code for more details. On this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m., our own senior pastor, Pastor Muriel, will be preaching at the Friendship Baptist Church at 7 o'clock p.m. I know that you all want to go and be of a great support to him. It's in the Atlanta University community. Please, ma'am, please, sir, make it your business to be there at this time. Amen? Now, with our final announcement, I want to invite our SBRC chair, Dr. Mika Ward, to come up and receive her at this time. Good morning, Cascade family. I have the honor and privilege of serving as chair of the staff parish relations committee. And for those of you who don't know, this committee is charged by the Book of Discipline to encourage, to monitor, and support clergy and lay staff's pursuit of health and wholeness and to serve as a bridge between the congregation and our pastor. The Bishop and the Cabinet of the North Georgia Conference have met regarding clergy appointments for the next conference year. On behalf of my committee, we are delighted to announce that all of our clergy members currently under appointment will be returning for another year. Let's give our clergy team a round of applause. <laughs> Family, please continue to pray for Pastors Muriel Pastor Harvey, Pastor Bush, and Pastor Ravel, as they lead us in being a light in the community and around the world through discipleship, service, and social justice. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, family. It is giving time, and this is, yo, we can give God a hand clap and praise for that, absolutely. It's a celebratory time where we have a moment as a corporate body, as one community, one voice, to give back to God today just a small amount of everything God continues to bless and bestow upon us as a church community. And whether you're worshiping with us online or here in person, you know there are several ways you can give right from where you are. If you happen to have your gift in your hand this morning, please feel free to drop it off at our receptacles located directly in our front of our church and by our cafe area as well. You can also give several ways right from your seat. You can download our Givelify app and you can give there. You can go to our website, cascadeumc.org, and you can give there as well. Family, we know God loves a cheerful giver, so we're excited for what God will do this Sunday as we give back to God. Would you go with me now to God in prayer? Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for the ability to give back to you. We pray for those who can give and also say a special prayer for those who can't give. We know that in your hands, you're able to do exceedingly above all we could ask or imagine. So it is with that faith we put this gift back in your hands so we will be able to be a blessing to the community and the world to draw people closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, church. As we continue in worship, it is prayer time. How many people know that you can cast all your cares on the Lord God and God will care for you? If there is anyone here this morning and you're carrying burdens with you today, your own, maybe family members, something that's happening at work, I invite you to stand as we stand before the throne of grace. And what I do know is that there is power in prayer. And when we go to God collectively, I know that God hears our prayers. Oh God, your Easter people are standing before you, God. We are people of hope. We are people, God, who understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. So God, we know that you are our shepherd and you have told us that we lack absolutely nothing. So for those people, God, who are feeling some lack this morning, God, I pray that you will just pour into them like you have never done before, God. Let their cup overflow, God, and they will give it out to others as they are being filled by you, God. Lord, we know that green pastures are coming, God. For those that feel like you are in a wilderness right now, it's just for a season. And we know that green pastures are on the way. So God, what I ask is that as we are headed towards the green pastures, that you would continue to hold us and, and, and keep us in the hollow of your hand, God. Continue to guide us, God, in the path, God, for your name's sake, God. That wherever we go, they'll know that we are Christians by our light and by our love. Oh God, we know that we will walk through dark valleys, but what we know, God, is that you're with us in the valley, you're with us on the mountaintop, you are with, there is absolutely nowhere we can go that you are not with us, God. So now, God, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear because you are the resurrected Savior and you have all power in your hand. So now, God, we just continue to ask that you will prepare a table before us, God, in the very presence of our enemies, God, that when we say that what God can do, what God has for us, when we say the name of Jesus, that, that knees will bow, Lord, and, and tongues will confess that you are God Almighty. So now, God, as we're here today, we know that your goodness has followed us, and we are here, God, and we can proclaim that you are Lord. You are Christ, and you are Lord. So now, God, what we pray is that as we go forth this week, you will continue to remind us, God, that we belong to you, that we belong to you, and that you always have us, God, covered by the blood of Jesus. So now, God, arrest all the fears, arrest, God, all the doubt, arrest everything, God, that gets in the way of us just obeying your will and going out into this world, God, without fear and without shame. We are not ashamed of this gospel, God. It is our life, and it is our light. So now, God, for all those who are standing here, I know you're covering us. I know you're covering us, God. So we say thank you. We say thank you, God. We say thank you, God. We say thank you, God, for answering our prayers. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
so now I pour out my heart to you. Oh, here in your presence, I am a new. Let's sing that together. So now. So now I pour out my heart to you. Oh, sing here in your presence. I am made new. Oh, let's sing it together. You know my name. You. He 
knows your name. Hallelujah. Come on, are you glad God knows who you are? If you are, why don't you give our God glory? Out of all the people in the world, God knows exactly who you are. God knows you by name. And Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful for the power in a name. We're thankful, Lord, that you, you gave the name that is above every name, that name Jesus our Christ, that at that name every knee would bow and confess that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. And Lord, we thank you that you seek a deeper relationship with us. And so now we thank you for the power of your word. We ask that you would speak. For we, your servants, are listening. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am simply the clay. Speak in Jesus' name. And the church said amen and amen. Friends, would you join me in praising God for this amazing music ministry, for the gift that they've offered us today. We're so thankful. Just for a few moments, I want to call your attention to the last chapter in the book of Matthew. You heard our young people go through those books of the Bible. Now, how many of y'all knew all 66 books? Well, I'm glad our young people know them. Amen. So the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. I want to read in your hearing verses 16 through 20 from the New Revised Standard Version of God's Holy Word. As we continue in this post-resurrection account of Jesus, as he is appearing in a myriad of ways to his disciples. Here the word of the Lord records, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. My friends, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. We've been in a sermon series that we began last week that we simply led us under the title, If I Knew Then What I Know Now. So I want to continue in that very light and lift up part two of this series, If I Knew Then What I Know Now. Friends, living in the security of a country with certain unalienable rights, including the freedom of religion, persecution for our faith almost seems taboo, and honestly, it seems unthought of. You see, we gather for worship in the finest of sanctuaries, sharing in abundance and elegance, and sufficiency and comfort, often alienated from the tragedies and the horrors of what many of our fellow Christians in other parts of the world experience daily for their unwavering and unashamed belief in Jesus Christ. It was reported in 2024 that 365 million Christians now live in nations with high levels of persecution or discrimination. If I were to put some numerical data to this, that is one in seven Christians worldwide, including one in five believers in Africa, two in five in Asia, and one in 16 in Latin America. Almost 5,000 Christians were killed for their faith in 2023. Almost 4,000 were abducted Nearly 15,000 churches were attacked or closed, 
and more than 295,000 Christians were forcibly displaced from their homes because of their faith. Family, I raise this today because perhaps as we gather even in this sanctuary on this Sunday morning, perhaps we have in a real sense forgotten how good we really have it. I thought I was going to get somebody to at least wink a man right there. When you really look down your pew, look down your row, when you look at where we are worshiping, it is a reminder when we think about the persecution that our brothers and sisters are facing for the faith around the globe. It's a reminder to us they re really do have it good. Okay, you're going to get it in a minute. I want to make sure you heard what I said. That we have it real good. With options. We got options to worship, y'all. Options to worship in person, online, and still folks want to complain. But, but, but even with that, there are people who don't even take advantage of those options. When brothers and sisters across the globe are hiding out just to worship Jesus. We've got it good. You think about it. Choice in and of itself is a privilege. Having a choice is a privilege. We're gathered here for worship, my friends, and we aren't thinking about whether or not when we leave here, our lives are going to be taken because we've just worshiped Jesus and talked about he knows my name and we shouted with the voice that we're not going to be killed when we leave here, God willing. The only thing we really worried about is when we leave here, making sure we get brunch. And for some of y'all, before one o'clock, you got a mimosa on your mind. Don't have to worry about whether or not our lives are in danger. But follow me, what would you do if you had to put your life on the line just to proclaim that you were a disciple of Jesus Christ? I want you to ponder that question even as we worship comfortably and securely here in the West because it is a question that tests whether or not your faith and the Lord is real, or if it's just some Sunday thing that you do. For some people, that worship is just a marking of the box, of, of checking off of the list, if you will, so that when you pray this week, you can at least remind the Lord you were in church on Sunday. But for others, it is truly a life or death situation. Is your faith in God real? So real, in fact, that if it came to you having to proclaim God in the face of death, what would you do? Well, friends, if you can at least wrestle with that question for a few moments, I want you to hang out with me in Matthew 28. Because this would be exactly the question the disciples of Jesus would have to answer as they are now wanted by the Roman government because the body of Jesus is now gone from the tomb. Matthew 28, in just a, few verse, just a few verses prior to verse 16, the guards who were at the tomb have gone to tell the priests what have happened. You remember on Resurrection Sunday, we told you that the angels had appeared like lightning and, and, the, temp, and the guards had become like dead men. Well, now the body of Jesus is gone and the guards have woken up and now they have a dilemma because there is no Jesus in the tomb and they've got to give an accounting to the governor as to what they have done with the body. So when you read Matthew 28 verses 11 through 15, you will see this grand scheme that has been devised. Verse 12 says that the priests after hearing the reports from the centurion guards, they devise a plan to give the soldiers some money and they tell them to go and spread the rumor that the disciples came by night, stole the body of Jesus while the guards were sleeping. Verse 15 says that the guards take the money 
And they went and did as directed, and they spread this lie, they, they spread this fabrication, they, they spread this rumor that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. Because isn't it amazing how quickly ignorant rumors can spread? And this one has spread like wildfire. So much so the disciples are in the upper room and, and Robert, as they're in the upper room, they turn on the evening news and they see on the headlines 11 pictures of them with the headline, Wanted for Stealing Jesus, King of the Jews. It's on the 6 p.m. report. They, they are now wanted for stealing the body of Jesus. They take out their cell phones, they're scrolling through Twitter, and they see trending, the disciples have stolen the body of Jesus. Uh, things are now gone from bad to worse. It's bad enough that Jesus was killed, but now we're wanted because he decided to get up. We're glad he is risen, but what are we supposed to do now? My friends, this is the epitome of fake news. We don't have the body, we're, but we're now carrying the burden because he had, we had the audacity to follow a man who upset the status quo, who was problematic to the establishment and who confounded the Roman power structure. And now they want to blame us for what he did. Friends, I want you to miss the tension of this text because now the disciples are facing a major decision. And that is, should we keep hiding because things are now more dire and difficult? Or should we get up and go meet Jesus on this mountain and Galilee like he told us to do? Uh, should we run in the other direction? Should we stay hiding? Should we not do what Jesus said do? Or should we get up and should we go to where Jesus told us to go? Oh, my friends, here is where I want to just park for a few moments and tell you this is where the tension of purpose meets the reality of life. When you decide or when you must decide whether you are going to yield to despair when times get tough or are you going to trust God and keep going? And the question that I just need to ask somebody right quick just to get into your business just for a few moments is have you ever been there? You ever been in a place where you felt like you were just meandering through the pit of despair, that you were just in that pit and you did not see a way out. In fact, I don't want to speed past this point because there's someone perhaps who came to the sanctuary today and you are right where these disciples are, that you feel like you are so low and so deep in a pit of despair and you just can't see your way out of it. You, you don't have to wink amen. You don't have to wave a hand. You don't have to tell your neighbor. You don't have to even say amen right here back to the preacher. But I know folk like I know folk and I know if you are human, we've all had those moments where we've been so caught in the web of despair that we've had, we feel like we've had more dark days than sunny days, where we've had more devastation than we've had glory. And every now and then, if you aren't careful, you will find yourself that low in despair and you are asking the same question that the disciples are asking what should I do should I stay here or should I get up and keep on going should I stay put in despair or should I at least try to move forward my friends it is here where we often have a wrestling match with progress and regress, advancement and stagnation, evolution and devolution. 
And you put both decisions on a scale, which you often have to do, and often your scale is out of balance because you don't know whether or not you should stop or should you keep going. Do I continue to press forward as an entrepreneur when I've had consecutive quarters of loss? Should I drop out of the program because I failed some classes and I can't even decide on a major? Should I stop the treatment because I'm feeling tired and I'm feeling sick? Should I leave the organization because everybody there gets on my last nerve. What are we going to do? Should I stay in the upper room? Should we stay here and hide or should we go see Jesus? Y'all, I want to tell you, my friends, uh, that there's something powerful about this question because for some people, you need to realize since the enemy can't cancel your purpose, his plan is to destroy your desire to pursue it. Okay, God, somebody missed that. That the enemy cannot cancel what God has called you to, that God has marched you out. God's put purpose all over your life. The Lord has planned and designed you for something. So since the enemy can't cancel that, what he will do is try to kill your desire to pursue it. And so what will happen is that he'll try to discourage you. He'll have people hate on you. He'll try to make circumstances seem insurmountable that will try to kill the purpose of your desire to pursue that which God has called you to. But can I pause right here and give you the first shout of this little sermon? And that is the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 16, it says, and now the 11 disciples went to Galilee. Okay, you missed your shout. You remember that they are in the upper room. They are tripping. They are anxious. They think they need to stay there. They turn on the news. They scroll through social media. Everybody wants to kill them. But your Bible says in verse number 16 that they decide to go to Galilee. Okay, you missed your shout. Pastor, what are you trying to say to us? Every now and then, life will be filled with so much despair that you will at least consider staying there Oh, but if you know who you're going to see and who sent you where you're going every now and then, you don't know what's going to happen when you get to Galilee, but I'll be doggone if I'm going to die here in Jerusalem. Is there anybody in here that can testify every now and then you just got to get up and keep on going? God, help me. I know it was tragic. I know it hurt. I know it was devastating. But they decide we're going to go to Galilee anyway. Now, family, the good news is when they get there, they understand that they're going to meet Jesus there. And when Jesus gets there, uh, the Bible says that they worship, but some doubt it. Deja, I had to ask, why? Did some doubt because this word for doubt in Greek is not talking about complete unbelief, but it talks about it's this word uh, distazo. It talks about uh, hesitation. It's like they got there. Some saw Jesus, started thanking God, started worshiping him because now they see Jesus. Now there's hope. But others of them hesitated. They were hesitant to believe in Jesus' ability to get them beyond where they were. And in every now and then, you're going to have two people and two kinds of people in the same room. You're going to have those who get it and who believe, and you're going to have others who just hesitate. And it takes them just a little bit longer to get on board with what you did. They need a little more proof. Those are the Thomases of the world. They need to see the hands, and they need to see the, the, the spear in his side. Oh, but if you can trust the Lord that when he shows up, you don't hesitate. You just follow what he's trying to. Matter of fact, nudge your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't hesitate. I'm going to tell you why this is so beautiful, not just, not just the fact that Jesus told them to go somewhere, but I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss where he tells them to go. Uh, he he could have told them to go to Capernaum, could have told them to go somewhere else. The Bible says he tells them to go to Galilee. Let church say Galilee. Pastor, why in the world? that Jesus tell them to meet him on a mountain in Galilee. Well, you got to understand, in Galilee is where it all began. 
Remember, he's walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he sees these fishermen, and he tells them, let me use your boat. And then after they haul in this great catch of fish, he tells them, come and follow me. Galilee is the place of new beginnings. And so if he's going to start something afresh and anew, he needs to take them back to the place where they remembered what he did in the beginning. God help me. The journey to Galilee from Jerusalem would have been about three to five days, about 30 miles by foot. And y'all, I wonder how the conversation went on the way to Galilee. Uh, Dr. Floyd, I know how people are. On the way to Galilee, they were probably asking some interesting questions. Uh, why is Jesus making us come all this way? Couldn't he come to Jerusalem and just stay there? Why we got to come all the way to Galilee? Uh, what if he doesn't show up? What if he abandons us? Come here. What, what, what if we die on the way? What if they find us and they kill us on the way to seeing Jesus? Because family, when you're walking in the unfamiliar, we mostly think about what will go wrong first. God help me. Our human nature is to weigh every possibility as to what will go wrong first. Okay, y'all in here with me this morning. I'm going to tell you, the, one of the reasons some folk have not walked into their purpose, started your business, done the, what God has called you to do, lived out on your passion, it's because the only thing that goes to your mind every time you get, the, you get the, the unction to take that step is how will this go wrong? If you can't testify, I'll testify. <laughs> Lord, what if we launch this church and don't nobody show up? What if we build this church in another country and don't nobody give to it? Uh, what, what if we start this partnership in community to try to house people who are unhoused and no one has compassion? But if God gave it to you, the first thing should not be to doubt God. The first thing should be to trust God because he gave you what he gave you. And if he gave you what he gave you, it must mean something's going to They don't realize that Galilee is the place of new beginnings and something new is about to begin for them. And I just came to Midtown to tell somebody who needs to hear this, that new beginnings always follow faith steps. That you cannot walk into a new beginning if you are not willing to take a step of faith. I wish that it was just that easy and just that simple. But sometimes you're going to have to step into what you cannot see when it does not make sense. When you don't have the schematics. When you don't got the blueprint. When you don't have all the resources. And God said, just take the step and then new things start to open. And friends, I want to tell you that that new beginning is always connected to the a breakthrough that you've been praying for. Somebody's been praying for a breakthrough. Well, take a step. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Y'all can make me work this morning. Verse 17 says, verse 17 says, and when they saw him, some worshiped, some doubted, uh, but finally they're there. Finally, they're on the mountain and they're safe. They're safe with the master and this is how Matthew chooses to end his gospel. This is a mic drop moment. This is how Matthew chooses to end his gospel. He knows that they're anxious. He knows that they're worried. He knows that they are in despair. But Jesus decides in this moment to flex his hypostatic union. That is being fully human in his resurrection and fully divine in his nature and knowing everything that they are dealing with. Here's what he says in verse 18. His first words to them are these. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. He knows where they've come from. He understands that Rome is out to get them. He knows that they are anxious and they are awaiting 
death if they go back to Jerusalem. But when they meet him in Galilee by faith, the very first words that Jesus gives to them are these. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. Can I tell you why that is important? Because it means that Rome may have power, but Jesus has all authority. It means the devil may have some power, but God has all authority. It means your enemies may have some power, but your God has all authority. And if your God has all authority, then why are you walking around with your head held down? If your God has all authority, why? are you not walking by faith and not by sight if your God has all authority why don't you get up in the morning and wipe the tears from your eyes and walk in the authority that God has already given? the Bible says he's been given authority in heaven and on earth and I just need four or five of y'all that can testify with me I'm glad that he's got authority because if he's got authority then I've got permission Because he's got authority, you've got permission. You've got permission to walk in authority that God has given you. It's like any parent knows, any parent knows this, that, that your kids can go and they can get a piece of candy and you didn't authorize it. And guess what? They in trouble. I didn't tell you to do that. Number one, you don't own nothing in this house. Uh, you don't own the candy. You don't own the clothes on your back. You don't own the bed you sleep in. You don't own a thing. Now, you can use it, but you don't own it. But when you tell them, you can go get the candy. When you tell them, they can stay up past bedtime. When you tell them they can do something they normally would not be able to do, what you are telling them is that you are only able to operate because I have given you the authority because of the position that I hold in the house. And every now and then the enemy will try to wonder and your people around you will wonder how you are prospering the way that you are. Why you not crying all night long? Why you can still worship God in the sanctuary? Why you can still walk by faith and not by sight? It's because you serve a God who gave you the authority to move into what you moved into. He gave you the authority to have that office. He gave you the authority to have that job. He gave you the authority. And if God gave you the authority, why are you so scared every day? If God gave you the authority, why are you walking around so timid? For greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You need to start walking in the authority. Okay, all right. This ain't the first time he's given them authority. This isn't the first time he's talked about his authority. No, you remember in Mark 10, he gave them authority. Excuse me, in Mark 6, he gave them authority. In Luke 10, he tells them, you've got authority. He sends out the 72. You've got authority to go cast out unclean spirits. And then you know that verse in Luke 10, 19, where he says, I've given you authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. He's already given them authority. So it puzzled me why in the world would Jesus raise authority again when they already knew he had authority. Y'all, it messed me up. And Keith, I had to say, you know what? It's amazing that nothing is new under the sun that God had already told them they had authority but every now and then the Lord has to come back and remind us of what God has already done what God has already said so that when you walk into what's to come you don't need nothing new you just need to recall what the Lord has already done is there anybody in here that can testify that you look back over your life and you see that the Lord has done something and therefore, you know what you're walking into. He, he, he's given authority. And here it is. I love this. He says, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, go. Okay. All right. I know. I know. Let, th th therefore, go. Therefore, you've got permission to go. Go and do what? Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always to the ends of the age. That's number one, a purpose statement. 
He says, you've been given a purpose to go. And this purpose is not just limited to what they can see. But no, he says, you go to all nations. That, that you go and you baptize people from everywhere. That you don't just need to be making Midtown Christians or Southwest Atlanta Christians, but you need to be making Christians all across the globe. It really speaks to God's global vision for our lives. Don't you be that person that is so small in your thinking that the only thing you want to do and try to go grab is what you can see. But the Bible says eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for those who love him. You've got to expand your vision. You've got to think more broadly about what the Lord can do. Some of us could go so far, but our thinking is so small. And God says, you've been given so much purpose with so much authority that you've got to pursue where your dreams can't even go. Okay, all right. Uh, God can take you where your dreams can't even go. It's, it's purpose, but it's also protection. It's also provision. He says, and remember, I am with you. That if God calls you to it, there is a provision and there, there's a protection. But then here it is, and I'm done. There's thirdly, there's a promise. And the promise is, I'm with you always, air day, at all times. There is never a time where you are walking that I'm not with you. I'm with you always. And then he says, to the end of the age. But this puzzled me, and I'm going to teach my clothes, and I'm going to sit on down. Here's what puzzled me. What puzzled me is that when you read all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you read Acts, they all have stories of commissioning. Matthew 28 is the Great Commission, but Mark talks about Jesus telling them to go. But when you get to Luke, and when you read Acts, there's something very specific that Jesus tells them about going. He gives them a location to which they will now go. When you read Luke and Acts, it's going to blow your mind. This is what he says. He says, and when you go, the first place I'm sending you to is Jerusalem. Somebody just understood exactly what was said. Because they're in Galilee. Jesus just told them to leave Jerusalem and come to Galilee. So Jesus, hold up. (laughs) You remember the news reports in Jerusalem, don't you? You, you know we're still trending on social media, don't you, Brother Jesus? So why in the world would you send us back to the place with the people that want to kill us? God help me. Jesus, I, I, I would go to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world, but Jerusalem? Jerusalem, they're going to kill us. Why come? You want us to go back to Jerusalem? and potentially face death. Y'all, this thing blessed me, and I want to give this to you because I hope it blesses you. Because sometimes God will send you back to the very place to face the very people that tried to take your life. But this time, they have to witness what God is doing through you and the power of God that's on you. Goodbye, Cascade. May the Lord bless you mighty good. That's why you need to start reading Psalm 23 because he will still prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And so this time when they go back to Jerusalem, they're not just going back as 11 brothers who have nothing, but don't you miss it. They're going back this time with a new authority. They're going to get a new team and then they're going to have a new power when they go back and face Rome. Goodbye, y'all. May the Lord bless you mighty good, but every now and then you ought to give God glory that your enemies will have to pull up a seat to what God is doing in your life. And the reason God is doing it is because God wants them to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God wants them to know that all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, you 
can go. And every now and then you ought to just give him glory right about there that you've got some people watching you and God is blessing you in the midst of what they're watching. Y'all, let's stand. I'm done. Last Sunday, last Sunday, last Sunday, last Sunday, them Gamecocks from South Carolina. Y'all, them sisters did the doggone thing. They, they, they did the thing. Uh, but let me tell you, equally, y'all come on up, e equally as exciting as the game was the after game comments by that bad sister, Coach Don Staley. Some of y'all may not have seen it. If you didn't, go back and YouTube it. But after the game, Coach Staley is asked by this commentator, how does it feel? You just won a national championship. Y'all with tears in her eye, couldn't hardly get any words out. The spirit gave her enough to say, I just give glory to God. I just thank God. And she made it all about God. But you know what got me? Is that that's not uncommon because a lot of folks start giving God glory in victory, right? A lot of folks give God glory in victory. But what stood out to me was what she said. It was a statement that she made and it blessed my whole life. She said, you know, God is funny. God is funny, God is real funny that the devastating loss that we had last year God is so funny that God put us back in the same place with a totally different team. And then she said these words. I'm leaving. I'm leaving with this. She says, "Now that's uncommon favor." God help me. Okay. All right, you. Y'all, I don't know what y'all are praying for, but in this season, I'm praying for uncommon favor. I'm praying for uncommon favor. Lord, open a door that nobody can close. God, heal a body that confound the doctors. Lord, I need uncommon. Can anybody just shout right quick because you're believing God for uncommon favor? Move a mountain. Make a way. Bring a child back. Uncommon favor. That, that, that. I'm just uncommon favor. And the reason we can talk about uncommon favor because we serve a God. We serve a God who has all authority. If I knew then, knew now what I knew then, knew then what I, what did I say? Y'all know what I'm talking about. If I knew then what I know now. My daughter kept me up too late last night. This day. If I knew then what I know now, I would tell you that there's no enemy too great. There's no challenge that's too insurmountable for God to carry you through. Go with God. Trust the Lord. Walk in that authority. Watch God make a way. Lord, we're grateful for how you teach us and how you instruct us in your word. We're thankful because we, we lean on you. We depend on you. And now, God, we call upon you because we need you to do what only you can do. Thank you for having your way through your word. Now speak to someone in this very moment who may be making a decision to either join your church or, Lord, to give their life to you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. The doors of the church are open. We invite you now, if that's you, our, choir, our praise team's going to sing. If God moves on your heart in this moment, to make it real, to make that commitment today. We're going to invite you to come so that we can pray with you and welcome you into what God is doing in this church family. The doors of God's church are open. We invite you to come today if that's you.
And perhaps you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know there are a lot of people here. And maybe you didn't want to make this a public profession, but after worship, you want to hear more about Cascade. You want to become a member of the church. Our discipleship ministry will be here to my left right after worship. We would love for you to stop by. You can become a member still at the conclusion of this worship experience. And maybe you're online today from anywhere across the globe. We want you to become a part of what God is doing here at Cascade. Join our family. Go to our website at cascadeumc.org. We would love to welcome you, and someone will contact you immediately to welcome you into this church family. Well, friends, I pray that you have been blessed today, and I pray that as you receive this blessing, you would know the Lord will bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our God lift up the glory of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may you live for God, love God, and follow God. And in all things, let us continue to stay the course is our prayer. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen and amen. Go in peace. May the peace of God go with you. Friends, what a joy it has been to worship with you on this day. I pray that something was said or done during this experience of worship that has drawn you closer into your walk, your relationship with Jesus Christ. Look, we want you to connect with Cascade. We want this to be your place to find community and belonging. Go right now to our website at cascadeumc.org. There you can join our family. We believe that everyone needs to be a part of a faith community that can love them and through which you can serve your community. We want Cascade to be that place for you. And so we thank God for you and we pray that you will live for God, love God and follow God, and in all things, continue to stay the course. Be blessed.